Hi guys and welcome back to Kitchen War Gamers and welcome back to my kitchen. So on this video what we're going to do is uh, talk about the tank rules. Uh, in this first part, <coughs> excuse me, in this first part we're going to do tank on tank and then in the second part uh, we're going to do um, troops and tanks. So uh, I must apologise for any background noise. I'm looking after my daughter's dog again and um, like I said she Loves being around me, so you'll probably hear some scratching about as she moves around the kitchen. Okay, so like um, everything in bolt action, every unit, every vehicle gets an order dice, and they all go in the bag. Okay, so let's say we've pulled out the American one. So what we're going to do is give the American tank uh, the advance order. Now, uh, tanks move up to nine inches um, if they run. Uh, they can double that to 18. Um, if they're on a road, they can double each movement. So their normal 9-inch move will go to 18 and so on. Uh, just because it's a road and they can move better with that. Okay, so this Sherman uh, advances. Um, during the advance, either um, before it moves, after it moves, or in between, it can make one 90-degree pivot. So you need to work out before you actually move where you're going to make that pivot to get you in the right position. So this American Sherman's moved up and he's come across this uh, Tiger tank. But for the purpose of these rules, what we're saying is both tanks are medium tanks with medium guns. Uh, just why we go through the rules. But as you know, each tank, uh, light, medium, heavy or super heavy, um, and the weapons they, they have with them uh, all give you different things like um, a higher penetration uh, bonus uh, against armour or their armour's thicker makes it harder for them to uh, be destroyed. Okay, so he's made his move and um, obviously because it's an advance order you can shoot as well. So just like uh, infantry, um, you work out uh, your uh, pluses to your rolls to hit. So you start on a three normally. So he's moved. So that's a four. And obviously the range, uh, if it's under half, it's uh, maximum range of the weapon. Uh, that's okay. If you're over that half, you get another plus one to hit. So as I said, we've got one to hit. Uh, sorry, four to hit. So it's a one shot weapon, the main cannon. So we get the dice. And see if we can get that four to hit. Oh, I wish I did that in game. A six. So we've now hit the um, German tank. So now what we need to work out is if that shot has actually penetrated the armor and gone inside and done some damage to the vehicle. So uh, a medium uh, cannon has got uh, a plus five. Now what this means is we roll a d6 and we add the plus five. And the medium uh, tank's armor is a nine so that plus five plus the dice roll needs to beat that armor so let's see how we go oops on the hedge we don't count that in game just uh, another house rule we have and we got a four so four and four uh, four and five is nine so we've just beat the armor so what we need to do is go on to the um, armor page um, the the table damage table um, just bear with me sorry I've got my rule book because I can never remember everything all the time um, so the damage result um, on vehicles um, basically what we do now is we roll a d6 and that corresponds to what type of damage we've done now because we've got the armor spot on like we needed nine and we've got nine what that is is superficial damage so you roll d6 minus 3. Now if I beat that armour uh, value of 9, that becomes full damage. And we just roll a normal d6. Now if it's massive damage, and what that is, we beat the enemy's armour by 3, that becomes massive damage. And we roll 2d6 on the chart, and each result applies to the vehicle. So as you can see, massive damage, you got twice as much uh, look to actually destroy it Okay, so we got the nine so it's only superficial damage. So we roll a d3 uh, Sorry, I'm thinking of the the minus three we're going to be putting on this we roll a d6 And we get a six gosh. I wish I threw all these sixes in games 
uh, and we take uh, three off it. So we look at the chart and the number three is on fire. So we've put the vehicle on fire. However, there is a, a few things that can happen to it. And what I'll do is I'll read off the chart. So the hit ignites the vehicle's full um, uh, fuel or ammunition. The crew are driven into blind panic, fear to be trapped inside the burning wreck. Add one additional pin marker. Okay, so we'll put a pin marker on. And we'll put a pin marker on for the hit as well, but there is something uh, where vehicles can ignore pin markers, depending on if they're a regular, inexperienced or veteran. But for now, that's the one that hit, just like with infantry, and we put an extra pin marker on uh, because that's what it's telling us to do. Um, so we put the pin marker on, and then the uh, morale check of the vehicle. So let's roll. So uh, it's regular, so they've got nine minus two pin markers. And they roll seven, which is just in. So they've passed that. Uh, if the test is passed, the fire has been put out and, and uh, of, it, of its own accord, or the crew have put it out. Place a down marker uh, dice onto the vehicle. So we pull out the German's marker, uh, order dice, and we put that onto um, down. <clears throat> um, okay, to show that it's come to a halt and cannot take any further action this turn. If the test is failed, the crew abandon the vehicle and it's considered knocked out. So if they failed that morale test, that vehicle is basically gone and you get the, the, the order dice for it as a, a point reward. Um, if the vehicle survives the test and has one or more turrets, roll on the turret jam. Okay, so it survived the, past the, um, the morale test and it's got a turret on, as you can see. So what we do now is roll for a turret jam. And basically, on a four, five, or a six, um, the, it's passed. On a one, two, or three, the turret is jammed. So let's roll, move that one out of the way. Let's roll to see. And it's a one. The turret is jammed. <coughs> Excuse me. So for the rest of the game, this turret cannot move. So if it was normally, the, the vehicle would make a 90 degree uh, move to get into position where you wanted him. And then he could turn his turret and look down a road or somewhere else. But because of the turret jam, he can't move his turret. So basically, you just got the front arc. So it survived being knocked out. But again, as you can see, the turret jam is not too good. You can also get uh, a mobilized as well and a turret jam. So you basically, you just tanks just sitting there waiting for someone to uh, come into its front arc uh, to shoot at. Okay, uh, if it was destroyed, um, which is on a four, five or a six, um, like again, you get his dice as a point and the vehicle, what I do is put on a smoke plume just to show that it's gone or down. Or you can remove the turret and turn it upside down. Okay. So that's the advance order with fire. So the next one, again, uh, a rally. So if you've got pin markers on you, just like the infantry, you roll to rally to remove pin markers. So it's a D6 plus one. So I've got one and one is two. So you just take two off and you've got one left. And as you know, with pin markers, it goes against your morale and also your firing as well. So normally you need a three to fire, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, and then your range and everything else, and then uh, a plus one for each pin marker. So if this guy didn't uh, move, somebody was win within half his range, but you had three pin markers, you'd need a six straight off to uh, try and hit that vehicle. So as you know, with bolt action, putting pin markers on thing, you know, helps you out, puts pressure on the other player. <clears throat> okay, the down order. Okay, vehicles cannot go down like troops. If you say you're going to shoot at a vehicle, you cannot put them down. The, the, the only time a down marker is used, like you just saw, is to show that the vehicle 
cannot move or it's been stopped in its tracks or um, it, it's taken other damage and cannot do anything for the rest of that turn. So the dice comes out and it goes down just to show that's the end of the tank for this turn of what it can do. Okay, run order. Like I say, in just like the troops as well, it's double your normal move. And don't forget, if you're on a road, that's double your move uh, twice, basically, so you can move further uh, down roads. So as a counteraction to that, if you can get a tank on the road and cover it on the ambush, you can stop the enemy trying to move up vehicles um, up the road at the double um, by putting them on ambush. Okay, next we have ambush, talking of which. The ambush is just like the, the same with troops. You just sit there and wait until uh, an enemy unit uh, comes into your uh, firing arc and your range, and then you can uh, take a shot at them. Uh, and again, like uh, with the troops, at the end of the turn, you can either take him off ambush, leave him on, that, on ambush, or if there's a, a visible target, you can take, take a, 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 turn that to a fire order and take a shot at them too. Okay, so next we come to the fire order, which I've, I've just gone through the sequence on the uh, advance order, but obviously you don't get the minus one uh, for movement. Uh, it's just a straight up three. And the range on their tanks in bolt action are quite far and quite powerful. Um, so if you just sit in there, put them on fire if uh, an enemy unit or an enemy vehicle's there, and it's just basically three up to, to hit unless they're out of your range or you've got pin markers on you. So, okay, so that's the, uh, the order dice uh, for tanks. Now I'll just go through um, a bit of movement for you. Um, <clears throat> if you come up to obstacles, tanks can basically just plow through them if it's a hedge or a wall or, um, yeah, or a, a fence. We've got a fence behind the tiger there you can just plow straight through them no problem um, but if you come across uh, specific things that are tank traps let's just say these two uh, bit of wall sections are tank traps that would stop your tank from moving through and basically you'd have to find another way around you just can't pile through them. so if you have got um, tank trap markers you know it's a good place put put them on the end of a road Again, to stop that tank going, uh, double its movement. Okay, and the other one is um, your tanks can try and smash through buildings. Um, but we'll, we'll include that in the buildings rule when I come across that. Um, okay, so what we're going to do um, is uh, talk about uh, infantry next. And... Um, what tanks can do against infantry and obviously what infantry can do against tanks. Okay guys, so thanks for that and I'll see you in a minute. Hi guys, welcome back. Um, I just realised before I was going to uh, set everything up for the um, the tanks against infantry, I never spoke about the pin markers with tanks. Um, basically what it is, is the experience of the tank depends on if it gets pin markers or not. Now, when I first started uh, playing bolt action, obviously we did the basic rules. And if a tank gets hit, it gets a pin marker, which is not the case. And I always wondered why take uh, an inexperienced, a veteran or a regular tank, you know, for the point system. And this is the reason why, because at certain situations, the tank crew do not take the pin markers or they do, depending on their experience. And that's what it goes on. So an inexperienced vehicle, if anything fires at it, say the 50 caliber on this um, American half track, it's got a penetration value. So if that hits a tank, obviously it's not going to burst through it because the armor's eight. Um, if it's inexperienced, what they do is tend to panic. So they could flee the vehicle or, you know, try and avoid stuff. So what happens is any shot that's got a penetration value of at least one, a pin marker goes straight on it, no problem. If this was um, a veteran vehicle, that hit, say this uh, again, the half track fired at it, 
they won't bother because they've learned to um, understand the the hits and um, you know if if it was um, a, a glancing hit off a, a big cannon, they'd know the difference between that and a fifty caliber um, bullet hitting it. So with veterans, if they are fired at and the the shot could penetrate them and um, you know go into the tank to cause damage. What happens is you roll to damage uh, on the vehicle. So say like uh, another medium tank uh, has got um, plus five on the D6. So you roll your dice and you get two. Add the five is seven. Now because it hasn't penetrated the armor, the, the veteran tank ignores pin markers. It doesn't get one. Okay, so that's the difference between um, you know the inexperienced and the veteran. Now the regular tank, what that is, um, sorry I've just got to look at the book again because I'm getting mixed up with them. Uh, if a regular tank takes a, a penetration, a, a hit with something with at least one penetration, but it can't damage it, the same as the veteran one, what you have to do is roll the dice. Um, so on the roll of a dice, a roll of a one uh, to three, uh, it ignores the hit. So, um, sorry, I'm falling over myself again. So what you do, you've been hit like the veteran one, but he doesn't take uh, the pin marker. Whereas a regular, what he has to do is roll to see if he does take the pin marker. So the shots come out, he only got a seven and he needs eight to penetrate you. So what you then do is roll the dice. On a one, two, or a three, you take the pin marker. On four or above, you don't take the pin marker. So I hope that's made sense. Uh, and that's what happens with um, why you would think about taking a veteran tank or taking a, a regular tank compared to um, an inexperienced one. And therefore the point difference in, in um, the points between them. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna crack on and uh, get the troops ready. And see you in a sec. Okay, welcome back, guys. So, infantry and tanks. Now, things get a little different here. Uh, obviously, troops have to have anti tank weapons to fire at a tank. So, basically, uh, rifles, machine guns, pistols, and all that lot can't do anything to a tank. So, they can uh, go into close combat with it. And the same for the tank. The tank can try and uh, ram, uh, ram troops and squish them to the ground or make them turn into a blind panic and run for their lives. So let's talk about the tank first <coughs> in close combat. So what happens is the tank, if it's more than six inches away and declares um, the run order, which is, um, you know, makes it so it can charge and double its move. So it gets the run order and he declares it's going after them troops. If he's within six inches, the troops can't make any um, fire for effect, um, just the same as if it was um, infantry against infantry. If it's uh, away from that, if they've got any anti-tank weapons, they can fire, just again like uh, with troops on troops. So these guys haven't got any anti-tank stuff. Uh, it's um, a seven-man squad there, but um, just for the, the rules we're talking about, is the 10 man squad. So what happens then? So you've put your run order on and the tank's normal move is nine. So you measure out the 18 inches and let's just say the 18 run out there. So what's gonna happen now is the tank's going to uh, move full speed up to this point and that's where it's gonna stop. So any troops in between are going to have to um, get out of the way or get crushed or they could go in blind panic and uh, leg it basically. Now if there's any friendly troops uh, in between that, the tanks obviously can't go through friendly troops so it would have to come to a full stop. So let's say open ground, so the tank moves up and gets into base contact with the troops. Now what happens here in the close combat? is the troops have to take a morale test. So let's say uh, these are uh, regular troops. So they need uh, a nine to pass their test. 
Also, don't forget if they've got any pin markers on them, that drops their morale down. So, <clears throat> just for instance, they've got no pin markers, so they need straight up nine. And there you go, they've rolled a five. So because they've passed their morale, what they do is step to one side, jump out of the way, and the tank carries on with its movement. Now if there's another enemy uh, unit in the way, the same again, all the way until the tank comes to the stop at the end of its, um, its distance, or if it comes uh, to where it basically can't go any further, that's where it stops. So let's say for instance, sorry, just kick the camera. The troops fail their morale test. So this tank comes thundering at them. They fail their morale. They are basically wiped off the board. And their dice goes to the Germans as a point. And that's basically it with tanks uh, attacking troops. Okay, just let me reset. So, what about troops against tanks? So this unit of uh, American troops, uh, let's just say there's 10 of them again, decide they want to do something about this tank. Now, if this tank is uh, immobilized or, or not, or anything else, <clears throat> it still works out the same. So what happens is because the troops have been given the order to uh, attack the tank, and try and uh, do what they can to kill the people inside, they have to take a morale test. Now they have to do this with a minus three because they're not too keen on going. So regular troops, uh, which is nine minus a three, so they need at least six. And they've rolled a seven. So that attack has failed and no further action is taken. However, if they are equipped with anti-tank grenades, as you can see in the, uh, the army makeup in, in the books, um, it does say if um, anti-tank uh, grenades are taken, they become tank hunters. And basically what that does is boost their morale to actually get in and tackle the tank. So that minus three to their uh, morale doesn't take effect. So they roll on their full morale, needing nine. And there you go. They got an eight, so now they can go into combat. So basically all you do is take the troops into base contact or the best they can to show that they're in. Now, <clears throat> what happens is each troop uh, gets to roll a d6. Let's say there's 10 here, so we'll get two, four, six, eight, ten 10 dice ready. And basically what they need is four fives or sixes to cause any hits. So we'll roll them. And they've scored one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so these five hits work out like the weapon on a tank. So um, the, the shot from a medium anti-tank gun has five plus a D6. So none of these infantry well, they've got five dice, so they get a five plus a D6 to do damage on the tank. So roll a D6. They've got one plus the five is six in total. Now that's not enough to damage a medium tank, which armor is eight. So there you go, a failed attack, nothing's happened. But if they did, say they rolled um, a 10, sorry, they got five dice and they rolled a dice so we add them together and they've got 10. So they've damaged the, uh, they've, you know, gone over the, uh, the eight, uh, nine armor. So basically what you do again, you go back onto the um, damage chart in the uh, rule book, or if you're good enough to remember it, you roll your D6 and find out what damage you've done. And basically any damage um, on a four, five or a six, the tank's destroyed. Um, not forgetting, the um just let me go to the book again sorry guys i will get this in my head one day but hey ho there we go um superficial damage so if they they need a nine so if they roll nine that's uh superficial damage so they roll a d6 on the chart minus the three 
if they got full damage, so they've beat that nine, um, they uh, just roll a straight up d6. And massive damage, if they've rolled three uh, over the armor, so the armor's nine. So if they get 12, that's um, massive damage and they can roll two d6s and they apply both them results. Okay, so like on that, um, they roll uh, a one and a three. You put both of those um, <coughs> off the chart into that. So <coughs> that's close combat with troops. So let's talk about what else the tank can do to troops. Well, basically the vehicle has got a hull mounted MG and um, a coaxial um, Sorry, not MG, uh, medium machine guns, not just normal machine guns, medium machine guns. And it's got its main weapon. So what you can do with your tank, you can choose, um, and this comes into, let's say you've got uh, an enemy vehicle and some troops. What you can do is split your fire. So your main gun can fire at the tank and the hull mounted uh, machine gun can fire at the troops. And it's just the same as uh, troops with uh, MMGs, uh, you do rolls to hit and uh, rolls to wound, and uh, yeah, and also the main gun. Uh, so it's split fire. Now the main gun's got a coaxial machine gun. If you're firing your main gun, you cannot fire the coaxial machine gun as well. So let's say there's no um, enemy armor around. Excuse my arms. So what the tank can do now is got two choices how he can shoot these troops. It can use both MMGs and not use the main gun. So we'll have um, uh, off my head, I think it's that will be 10 shots. Or he can use his main gun. So what will happen if he uses his main gun? Well, what we need to do is look at the, uh, the weapon stats. So um, it's a medium uh, gun. So it's got a HE of 1, which is the HE template. Um, which is a one, which is this inner circle. So what you do is you place that, trying to get as many men underneath as possible, and then you do your rolls to wound. Um, sorry, I'm just checking something out. And also you, um, you've got plus one to the pen um, penetration. So what that means is regular troops, uh, they're fours. So that would knock them down to needing threes to wound them. Uh, and also that would put um, D2 pin markers on them. So basically <clears throat> odd and even numbers on uh, the dice. If it's an odd number, it's one. If it's an even number, it's two. So we got an odd number. So we just put one more pin marker on them. And as I said, uh, if it's not using the big one, he can use both his MMGs on the troops. Okay, I think that pretty much uh, covers the uh, vehicle rules. Uh, there is other options as well, obviously um, firing at vehicles, uh, sorry, <laughs> firing at uh, buildings, but we'll do all that when we cover the buildings rule. So I hope you enjoyed that and uh, I hope it's helped you out a bit. Uh, I know as we're going along, uh, we're still learning the rules. So this is helping me get my head around it as well. And um, yeah, so don't forget guys, Make it, paint it, and play it. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks very much. Hi guys. Uh, while I was filming this um, video on the rules, uh, I just remem uh, remembered I f forgot a couple of things. Uh, one of them is the tanks can actually uh, reverse as well. Um, but if they do so, it's only at half rate. So on a medium tank um, movement of nine, um, it'll be four and a half uh, to, on its reverse. Uh, and they reverse straight back unless they can't go any further, like they come across an obstacle or uh, a friendly unit. The other one is uh, when you're shooting against uh, vehicles, you get some uh, uh, bonuses for hitting its side and the rear of the armor because they're uh, weaker than the front. So if you was to hit the side armor, <coughs> excuse me, you get a plus one on your armor penetration so say you've got uh, an armor penetration of seven obviously that'll go up to eight before you roll your dice and also the rear is a plus two because that's the weakest point of a tank um 
So again, if you've got seven, um, you get nine before you roll your D6. So obviously trying to get the side armor or the rear armor of a tank is um, important for you as well. Okay, thanks a lot guys and see you soon.